in 2017, we commemorated the centennial of the first woman in Congress, uh, Jeanette Rankin from Montana, uh, representative. Um, she was sworn into the House on April 2nd, 1917, uh, right in time for a very important uh, vote, a declaration of war, uh, uh, World War I. Uh, she voted against that. She was a group of 50 members that, that did so at the time. Uh, she ran unsuccessfully for the Senate, left the House at the end of that Congress, and she comes back for another term on the eve of World War II, and she's the only member of the House or uh, Congress to vote against U.S. entry into World War II. She was a pacifist, and she had a reputation for, uh, for that uh, throughout her lifetime. What we wanted to do was to kind of burrow in a little bit to her career and, and the, unique, the uniqueness of her being a woman on Capitol Hill. There's a wonderful picture from the 65th Congress uh, where the, uh, about three quarters of the membership is gathered on the east front of the Capitol, hundreds of members. At the very center is one woman, it's Jeanette Rankin, and she's surrounded by all male colleagues. And so part of the inspiration for the project was the centennial, but also to be able to ask questions of later generations of, of women in Congress, some of the questions we would have liked to put to Rankin. What was it like to integrate the institution? Uh, what was it like to try to get on committees and influence policy? Uh, what was the reception like from your male colleagues? Uh, how did you see your job? Did you want to stand out as a woman? Or did you, did you want to be known as a legislator? You know, what, what were your issues? How, how were you gonna, uh, how were you gonna craft the way that you were gonna be a congressperson? And that, that has informed a lot of the questions that we asked of uh, really women who were in the third and fourth generations of women in Congress, um, women who were first elected in the 1960s, 70s, 80s. As Matt mentioned, we of course wanted to ask all these questions of Jeanette Rankin, but we couldn't do that, so we decided what better way to honor or celebrate the commemoration of the first woman being elected to Congress than to talk to a whole bunch of women who did serve in Congress. So for this project, we have interviewed more than 50 people. Uh, the majority of those have been members of Congress. We've also talked to staff and in some cases, family members. Uh, for women who uh, were deceased to learn more about their careers. Um, so the most of the interviews have been video. On some occasions, we have spoken to people by phone. Um, the interviews ranged in time from 90 minutes to two hours. Uh, even though we wanted to talk to most of these people for days and days, uh, we did have a, a, a limited amount of time. And so what we would do is we'd ask a series of questions, uh, the same sorts of questions to all of the women. And then we would do more specific, career specific questions as well. Um, but we thought that it was gonna be a short project. We started with just a, a, a group of maybe five or 10 people that we wanted to talk to. And then we got recommendations from women. Um, oh, if you're talking to me, you must talk to this person and talk to this person as well because their career was so important. So the project grew in scope and size. And we started, uh, the earliest that we went back was to the 1960s, the woman who served in the 1960s. And then we have continued these interviews and have talked to people as recently as uh, those who have uh, retired in this last Congress. So it's really been an amazing project, something that we thought was gonna be much smaller in scope and size and just grown and it's been uh, fantastic. The majority of our interviews are on our website, history.house.gov, and there's a separate bucket for oral history and particularly for this project, A Century of Women in Congress. And what we've tried to do is to make these as accessible to all kinds of viewers, um, anyone that's interested in women in Congress. So we have full transcripts for all of the interviews that are online. And then we also have video and audio clips. And in some cases as well, we have um, objects. So if for in uh, particular uh, campaign objects, for example, um, if someone's talking about how they ran for Congress and we found some information on a slogan that they use, they can talk about that. 
uh, some of these women that we've talked to you were chairs of committees, and so they have portraits that were done. So we would ask questions about the portraits. So all of that material is available online. And, and one other thing that I didn't mention that is really important for the women that we talked to, like I said, a lot of these were recommendations. Um, but we also wanted to maintain uh, a lot of, uh, like a diverse range of people that we talked to. So we have women from both parties, uh, women from all kinds of geographic districts, um, people that were in leadership and those that were rank and file members, women that were really interested in foreign policy, others that focused on domestic issues or really focused on their particular districts and constituent service. So it's a really diverse range of women that we were able to speak to. I mean, we literally have hundreds and hundreds of clips that are up on the website. Um, so it's, it's we're, we're, for this talk, we've narrowed it down to, to roughly 15 or 16 clips that we're going to show, uh, again, across a range of women uh, in terms of uh, their ethnicity, racial background, geographic background, all that. Um, we had a tough time boiling it down. I, we never had the opportunity to interview uh, Lindy Boggs. Uh, we did, however, uh, and Kathleen did an initial interview with Cokie Roberts in uh, 2009. And uh, then in 2017, for the centennial of Je Jeanette Rankin in Congress, we had the honor of moderating a panel and getting to throw questions at her about her career and her mom's career. One of the stories she told about her mom was they got right to <laughs> the gist of um, pathway to power and influence within the institution. How did women craft that path? And she told the story of her mom uh, winning the special election to succeed Hale Boggs in early 1973 and uh, coming to Congress with the experience of having been recently widowed and having to get credit uh, and finances in her own name. And it was exceedingly difficult because for the vast majority of women at the time, you had to have uh, a man who would uh, co-sign for credit, a husband, a brother, father, um, and uh, it, it made it very difficult. And so when she came to Congress, she pushed leadership to put her, put her on the banking committee. She went right to Tip O'Neill and said, I want that seat. And he said, ah, uh, we're full. And she said, I want that seat. And they gave her a seat. And during that very first Congress, one of the first bills that, that came before the committee was the Equal Credit Act. And when she read the first draft of that, uh, you know, race, ethnicity, uh, it, it, it ticked off a lot of boxes, but it didn't said nothing about marital status or, or sex. And so the way Cokie Roberts told the story, her mom left the rostrum while they were marking up the bill, went over to the copy machine, inserted the words and sex or marital status, copied it, handed it to her colleagues and said, now, gentlemen, I, I believe that this was just an oversight on your part. And I'm sure you'll agree with my edits. And it passed the committee unanimously. And that's that's part of the story of how women got access to equal credit. You know, and that's one of the things that I think has been so fantastic about these interviews is learning about the different ways that the individual women approach some of the resistance that they faced. You know, some were more, I guess I'd describe it as patient and persistent. Uh, some, like Lindy Boggs, used her charm and her knowledge of the institution, and others were very direct and in your face. Uh, so that's been a particular part of this project that I've enjoyed, just learning how all of these women approach these obstacles and were able to really leave their mark on the institutions. 